Hey guys, OG Delta Primus here, and uh, what a week. So, uh, as you know, I've been taken away from uh, Star Citizen by work in real life, and that's uh, that's been very busy. Um, on top of this, I came back and then found out that the video that I posted two weeks ago is doing really well and uh, is actually gaining a few hundred views per day and growing and getting some likes. And I just want to say that means a lot to me. Um, I put in a fair bit of effort into that video. It was my first video and it's doing really well. So that's great. So uh, you will all know that CIG doesn't exactly reward teamwork <laughs> at the moment. There's not much incentive for us to play as a team. Most of the time we can make more money solo than we do as a team. Um, and so I've been looking for something to do with my org to make us all a good amount of money. Uh, and I think I've found that. So the good thing is it's not without risk. Uh, you're going to have to work together as a team and there is uh, a potential for you to be shot at and some PvP, which makes it worthwhile, in my opinion. Uh, so it won't be for everyone, but it's totally legitimate gameplay. There's no duping involved. And so with that, um, I will take us through to what we need to do. The only thing that you will need uh, is someone to get you access to salvage level 3 missions, which are the 50k or 30k missions. Once you've got that, we're good to go. And then I will talk you through what you need next. So for part of this, you're going to need some FPS weaponry and armor. Now, I like to kit myself out. You don't necessarily need this, but the, there's certain things that you will definitely need. I've chosen some Moras of armor, as you can see here, um, and you will definitely need a helmet, so don't forget that. Um, next, I, I always take a few grenades just in case we end up in a fight. Um, it, it's up to you. Um, and I've brought one weapon. You won't need anything more than that as far as that's concerned. One thing I think is helpful with this is that you might take a rocket launcher or a rail gun as well, and that will become helpful later. You'll see also that we've got a multi-tool. That's imperative. Do not forget that. The med gun also. Um, I, and you'll need some cruise lux, because if you don't have that, then you're going to starve at some point. Bring some med pen ammo. Um, I always like to take some resurgera uh, because if the med gun uh, drugs you, you can get yourself out uh, and then make sure you put your helmet on because only a fool would suffocate because I definitely haven't done that myself. So next thing then is on to ship choice. Now, as you'll see in a second, I love the Taurus. Uh, it's got a real heavy ass to it, um, which makes it difficult when you're trying to maneuver it. So you could get away with the Cutlass. You could get away with a Star Runner even actually, uh, which would be good. The only reason I prefer the Taurus is it's a bit beefier. It takes a bit of more of a, a pound in when you get attacked. And also with the turrets and the weapons and the missiles, it can fight back. Um, the Taurus has 175 uh, units of cargo that it can carry, if not a little bit less or more, so forgive me on that one. Um, but uh, it, it's also perfect for using as a team. You can drop people out the cargo bay. Um, it works really good. So that's my choice of ship. Um, I'm more than open to hearing what your choice of ship is uh, and your suggestions. So please feel free to drop your suggestions below in the comment section and uh, we'll brainstorm it out. Okay then Delta, you say, what are we actually doing? So today what we're going to do is look at the illegal salvaging missions and more specifically the ones that cost 30k. They're the tier 3 missions. Now some of you will remember that we used to do this back before 3.19 dropped. Uh, and we found that some of these were loaded with loads of rare materials and CIG quickly stomped on it. Um, and I'm not entirely sure why until this day, but they did. Uh, people were making far too much money and not doing the salvaging missions. So um, then they went back and looked at it again. They acknowledged that some people would want to do this, but they shouldn't be making ridiculous amounts of money. And so they uh, added some stuff back into the game. They made it a bit more random. So I haven't really thought about it for a while. And then I went back to it and did some testing. 
and uh, found that actually even with the new changes um, you're putting 30k down and you're getting about 125 to 200k back which is really good um, and actually if you work in a group what you can do is mitigate the investment so uh, up to three players uh, will end up putting in anywhere from sort of 10 to 15k each uh, to cover the down payment and then you have one person or, or two people in the cargo bay and one in the pilot seat the pilot's job is to take you to each space and then the two in the cargo are to be dropped and to uh, one to go and liberate what's in the cargo bay of the salvage ship and uh, one to load your cargo bay um, and that's that's the, the fastest way we've found of doing it so far so i can hear you saying already delta what is it we're actually going to be doing then so we're going to ignore the cargo ship um we're not going to actually salvage that that gives us about 7500 uec per unit we're going to ignore that completely and we're going to go straight to the cargo bay and we're going to pull out the contents now the on the illegal missions the contents are guaranteed drugs so you'll get one unit of maize one unit of um uh, etam occasionally uh one unit of slam one of widow uh, you'll get one quantanium um and i think sometimes you get another one i can't remember for the life of me what that is but effectively uh, what you want to look at is the average value of the boxes that they're carrying are about 25k with maize being around 90,000 now um, you're going to get at least one of those in every in every salvage ship so you're looking at and as I said before anywhere from 100 to 200,000 in uh, UEC so your job as the pilot will be to put your crewmates on in the right position to be able to unload it really quickly now we've managed to get to a stage where we're doing three minutes per ship and then moving on to the next one um, and it's working out really well for us you can be out there for an hour and you can make significant money or you can just keep going and fill the Taurus up but obviously because you're splitting it across three people you, that the actual investment from yourself is minimal um, you know minimum of sort of 10,000 uh, so you're making significant gains here now the ship that we're looking at here is going to be the Starfarer. There's three ships. There's the Hammerhead, there's the Starfarer, and there's the Caterpillar, and they all have the same loot in them. So um, I'll teach you how to approach each one. As you can see now, we're going to approach the Starfarer from underneath. We're going to be upside down, pointing in the same direction, and the door is directly in between the uh, fuel pods. So when you jump out, um, you'll see our teammates going to jump across in a second, um, and uh, you'll probably be able to see but effectively we jump into the cargo bay we liberate the contents and then your job as the pilot is to go away now things you need to know is that the starfarer door if it opens and it goes inside the taurus when you pull away you'll both explode don't ask me how i know that and another thing that you need to know is that all of the contents of the ship have to be on the magnetic grid on the taurus before you start to move away because once you close that door what will happen is all of it drops out um and so but it, once you've connected it on the grid it doesn't matter you can move it around as much as you like it does and you can quantum away it's not going to fall out you just got to start with it in on that um magnetic grid before you can start to pull away and um, hopefully they'll fix that at some point one thing that you might be concerned about is the Quantanium. Um, that's in the blue and purple boxes. Uh, it doesn't explode when it's on your ship. Uh, so there's no timer that I've found for it so you can take that and you can fly around all day and it's not going to go off um, unlike some of the I think if you get it from mining it's it's on a timer or something uh, as far as I'm aware I haven't done much mining but I know there were some people that were worried about that that's not the case once you take it off these ships it doesn't matter it's inert uh, and I'm not entirely sure why that is but it is and it suits me so that's fine with that we're on to the next mission so all you do is you go back into your journal you abandon the mission you're on you'll slowly pull away from the ship so that you don't get caught in it and explode don't ask me how i know that again um and then you will pick your next um uh, 
tier three level uh, salvage mission. Um, in this case, we've gone to a, a hammerhead so I can show you how to go about approaching the hammerhead. So you'll see me originally go to the front of this hammerhead and that's because with all of these ships, they can be a real pain in the ass and for some reason they don't always open from the outside. There's an airlock on the hammerhead that, at the front that always works. You just run down the length of the hammerhead, pop open the uh, cargo bay and then you move to the underside to get to where the, um, the cargo hatch is and then the boxes are always on that cargo hatch so they'll just descend out of the uh, bottom of the hammerhead and you can literally line up the Taurus for them to just be moved straight in as you're about to see. It's nice and simple, once again um, you just move the boxes across and you're on to the next one. So the final ship is the Caterpillar. Now um, <laughs> through uh, luck more than judgment I guess uh, and doing it wrong loads of times I found out the quickest way to approach the caterpillar is to go to the nose the uh, cargo will always be in the second to last compartment so uh, unless you somehow manage to find a caterpillar that's absolutely full there's no point going in from the the sort of pilot's end you want to go to the nose and you want to go in through that front door now again um, so this time we managed to get it working uh, and found that the, the button on the outside did work um, and allowed us to just open the cargo pod that we wanted but um, a lot of the time that hasn't worked for me and I tend to jump in through the nose of the caterpillar and go into that, go through one set of doors and the cargo will always be on your right, st like stacked in a tower. Um, you can open the cargo door from the panel that's behind them and then um, you can park the Taurus right next to the door as it opens and you can literally just fire them straight into the Taurus. It's Again, you can do this in like under a few minutes so you can absolutely ram these missions into an hour and you can get your profit right up. Two, three blokes was the best uh, for me. Um, just because, uh, oh, I was saying that, three three blokes is probably the best if you're doing it for speed running because one can eject, open the compartment, whilst the other one uh, can then start to receive boxes and then jump uh, and get it onto the magnetic grid and the pilot can then pull away. That's the fastest way of doing it. Two blokes could probably do it, um, but uh, we did it today. We had like 600K per each in the course of an hour, but, you know, it, three it, you can still do it and still make probably more profit. Um, but I'd be interested to know what you guys managed to achieve so please comment with the amount that you make below it'd be good to judge and also whether or not you get any that have more than four or five in because I haven't come across that yet uh, so let me know what you get so now we move on to the scary bit of this particular way of making money so this is where it gets a bit tense now the best place to sell drugs is well known. It's Brio's Breakers Yard on Daymar. Um, however, everyone knows that, and so it gets camped. Now, the reason why I choose the Taurus is because the Taurus has the ability to take the fight to the people um, having those, like, pirate camps um it, you know if, if you've got a decent crew and you've got someone on the turret and you've got someone in the pilot seat um you can shred a fair few um enemy so um you know failing that you've got enough tank to run so the next part of our journey is to get rid of the drugs uh, that are in our um in our Taurus and to do that we have to go down to Brio's so you'll see us descend to Brio's in a second now something to be aware of when you get down there is the fact that Brio's breakers yard seems to have really crap landing facilities like that you'll see me struggle to put the bird down um, because it, it, the, the ground's really unsteady and when you pop if you do it wrong and I've done this before and you land on one of those and you open the elevator and um, it will flip your Taurus right um, so so make sure you land in a sensible position. The other thing that's caught me out in the past is some gangs will wait for you to touch down and then wait a good few minutes before they um, fire up their engines or, or decloak or whatever you want to call it um, and and come in to fight you. Now that means you have a limited amount of time on the ground uh, before um, uh, there's someone to be on top of you. So with that in mind, what we want to do is make sure that when we 
go in, we scan, we make sure there's no weird objects that are floating in space. That's a good indicator when you're scanning. Um, and then the other thing to be aware of is you cannot sell when someone is on your ship for whatever reason CIG thinks that's a good idea. So you have to have everyone out, which means that that ship is defenseless because you can't keep someone on the turret. And that's why I said earlier, if you've got a railgun or a rocket launcher on your two squad mates, then if something does come in, you've got some way of like firing back whilst on the ground because otherwise you're just defenseless. If an eclipse comes, you're stuffed. There's nothing you can do about it. But if, if it's small like fighters, like light fighters, even medium fighters, um, cutlasses, things like that, then you, you can take wings off and you can really like cripple them um, and you can put the ground uh, the fight onto the ground and that's really what you're aiming to do so rocket launchers are perfect for that and rail guns um, and that can catch people by surprise um, once you land get over to the terminal as quick as possible get your drugs um, in as fast as possible take a screenshot beforehand take a screenshot after um, and then that keeps it fair everyone knows how much money you've made from the drugs and then you want to get back in your ship and you want to get back in the air and into orbit as fast as possible away from Brio's Breakers Yard. One quick thing to point out that you'll see here is that when I first go to sell, um, it, it won't let me and there was no one on board at the time, but what there was was a body. So apparently you can't sell even if there's a body on your ship. So get rid of them before you go down to Brio's, just toss them out an airlock. Um, I didn't know that until we did this and that nearly cost us big time. For those of you being eagle-eyed, you'll notice that there's some skews on board my ship that we can't sell at Brio's Breakers Yard, and that is because you are right, it is Quantanium. Um, so that is the final leg of this particular journey. So in order to maximize our profit, we could sell at Port Olisar, but that will get us a, a diminished rate on our Quantanium. So the fastest way, uh, sorry, the best way of us doing this is to go across to Orison and to sell it at the uh, TDD. Um, so the Trade and Development Department, or I think it's called. Um, so it's a bit of a train journey, but you'll get into Orison and uh, sell it at 25,000 per unit. It's, it was In this case, uh, it was an extra 200 grand. So it was worth doing. Um, that again, take a screenshot before and after you sell to keep everything transparent for your team. And uh, then you are good to go. The last thing we should probably talk about really is uh, paying your team. Now, the way that we did it to make it really simple is that every ship we went to, that every salvage ship mission we took, they would pay me 10,000 um, or whatever it happened to be their split of it was. Um, and what that meant was that at the end of it, we just had to split it three ways because all of us had invested. Another way you can do it is that you pay up front um, and then you deduct the costs from the um, total at the end and then split the what's left of that that profit three ways i prefer to do it the other way um, and that minimizes my investment so if there's a 30k or something happens and we get blown up because somebody asked to something daft everyone's got money in the pot and it costs everyone so um, that's the way i'd recommend doing it so I hope this has been helpful for you guys. Uh, for those of you that didn't know how to do this before 3.19.1, um, this obviously is an in-depth guide. I hope this really helps. Uh, please let me know how you get on. For those of you who thought this was dead after 3.19.1 due to the nerf, hopefully I've enlightened you and you can see that it's not. Um, I'd really appreciate a like and a share uh, to help this channel grow, guys. It's, it's becoming my new hobby. So fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.